This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We crown champions in both the NBA and the NHL this week. And I think that as we transition now into the summer months, we've got some time to finally focus on the NFL and talk about the futures market there. We have not discussed Super Bowl 53 betting yet here on the show. We've talked some win totals. We talked about uh, some tough schedules and stuff like that. But we have not actually dug into the futures market and identified which teams grade out well and could potentially have the upside to win the whole dang thing. That's what we're going to do here today is outline what my numbers are saying about this year's Super Bowl candidates, uh, the teams that could potentially have the upside to win it all, and outline where I think the best bets are over at FanDuel Sportsbook. That is our job for today to dig into the futures market and let you know which teams I like most to win Super Bowl 53. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire here to dig in to the Super Bowl 53 futures market and outline where I am seeing value right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. I will dig into three teams. We're not going to recommend all three teams necessarily, but outline my thoughts on them, why they interest me the most, and uh, what to do with them based on the current odds over at FanDuel Sportsbook. We'll do all that here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcast. Uh, we, of course, are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, wherever you get your podcasts, you can find us. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or over on the Spotify app as well. And don't forget that all covering the spreads are posted over on the FanDuel YouTube page as well. Baseball season is in full swing, and there is no better place to get in on the MLB action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. That's up to $2,500 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So don't miss your chance to snag a no sweat first bet up to $2,500. When you join FanDuel today, FanDuel, official partner of Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Must be 21 plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. $10 deposit required. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See full terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino, LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG in Arizona. 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42 in Connecticut. 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WITH-IT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or in Kansas, ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelpline ma.org or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghelp.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text hope and y And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Now let's dig in here to the NFL. And again, we talked about some win totals earlier on, talked about other stuff, but haven't got to dig into... Super Bowl futures. This is a different discussion because it does require a lot of upside to win the whole dang thing. So I'm going to dig into what my numbers say right now, and we'll talk about what my power rankings have, and then we'll see if there's any value right now over at FanDuel Sportsbook. In my power rankings, the Chiefs are in a tier of their own. That is, they are first by a wide margin. That's both in terms of the power ranking and in terms of their win total. So accounting for schedule, the Chiefs, number one by a wide margin. I've got them at 12 wins for this year. So right in line with the market there, they are at 11 and a half wins with minus 134 on the over. So I think that's pretty fair, honestly. They're the only team I have projected to win more than 10.8 games this year, which puts them in a good position to claim the bye week and win the AFC. And that's a huge advantage, and it does put them in a great spot here. The Chiefs are 6-1 to one to win Super Bowl 53 over at FanDuel Sportsbook. The NFL is a chaotic league where 
you don't see dynasties for injuries can happen. Patrick Mahomes could get hurt. Travis Kelsey could get hurt. All these things could definitely impact that. So it's tough to lay six to one on such a chaotic league. But the Chiefs have been to five consecutive AFC championships. They've won three of those and they've won two Super Bowls in this span. I like what they've done the past calendar year or past calendar 15 months to build this roster to compete for the long haul. They were able to reload on the fly by trading away Tyreek Hill, using those those resources on defense to improve there. And especially as last year went along, we saw the defense get a lot better. And I think that makes sense given how young it was, they would trend up as the year goes along. So I don't have a model to project out a team's Super Bowl odds. I've got win totals. I've got a power ranking. I'm doing this based on those numbers and kind of using that to identify, okay, do I think this team is a value? And I don't like doing that. I prefer the NASCAR model where I've got actual win odds, stuff like that, MLB, these things. I prefer doing it this way, which is why I don't tend to talk about these as often. But I don't think it's absurd to bet the Chiefs at 6-1 to to win it all again. The implied odds there, 14.3%, which is very high, but I don't think it's totally off given what they've shown us so far. The one issue that we could have here is that you're locking up bankroll for eight months. And in order to justify doing that, you want a big edge because let's say the money you're going to put on the Chiefs win it all um, at six to one. You could take that money and put it in like, you know, a long-term investment. You could you could find other routes for that money as opposed to allowing sportsbook of your choice to have it in their bank account until February. So there actually is a downside to locking up bankroll for this long. And you do want a big edge to justify doing that. And I think that's a very good argument against betting the Chiefs. So personally, I have not bet them. Uh, probably not going to as of right now. And I think you also consider the way the market is right now. Will the Chiefs get shorter than six to one before September? I think barring a an injury to a quarterback like Josh Allen, Joe Burrow, Jalen Hurts, probably not. So I think you're safe. If you like the Chiefs, I might hold off, maybe bet them before week one, because I'm not sure they'll get a lot shorter than six to one. So I think you should be okay there. Locks of bankroll for a shorter amount of time. So at least as of right now, the Chiefs are not a team I see myself betting to win the whole thing, despite the fact I think six to one is probably a pretty fair offer. One area where my numbers disagree with the market is on who is second in the AFC. The market has the Bills there. They are 9-1 to to win the Super Bowl. I've got the Bengals second, and they're 10-1. to And I think those numbers should be flip-flop personally. This is not a Stephon Diggs was upset for a day thing. I don't care about that. That's probably going to be fine. I think the, the big... Counterpoint here to being high in the Bengals, because I feel like the pitch for them is pretty obvious, given they've been to consecutive AFC championships, stuff like that. The counterpoint would be the strength of the divisions, because the Bengals are going through the Ravens, the Browns, and the Steelers. I think the Steelers are pretty decent, honestly, given their defense, given the fact that they did make some gains uh, in the second half of the year with Kenny Pickett. They did improve as the year went along. So I do like the Steelers. The Browns, we'll talk about here in a little bit, actually. And the Ravens have Lamar Jackson. He is happy. He is healthy. He is content. That is a pretty dangerous division. But I actually have the Bills as having a tougher schedule than the Bengals this year. If I take my power ranking and just apply it, I'd have the Bills expected win total at 10.6. So not accounting for the teams they face, how they face and stuff like that. Expected win total for the Bills based on their power ranking alone is 10.6. But once you put in their actual schedule, the Bills come out with 10.2 wins based on my numbers. The Bengals are exactly at expectation. So they actually have an easier road than the Bills do. The The AFC North faces the AFC South this year and the NFC West. The NFC West is a softer division than typically is, so... They actually get a pretty easy road, whereas a relatively easy road, whereas the Bills now face Aaron Rodgers, hopefully a healthy Tua Tunga Veloa as well. So the AFC East is tough, and the perception, I think, is not caught up to reality in that regard. To me, that says the Bengals should be number two, both in the power rankings and in Super Bowl odds for the conference. So they're 10 to 1 right now. That's 9.1% implied odds. I think that's a fair value if you're interested. Now, 10 to 1 is still not a super short number, but it's also 
five implied percentage points lower than what the Chiefs are at. So I can better justify betting the Bengals right now at 10 to 1 than I can the Chiefs at 6 to 1, simply again from the perspective of do you want to lock up bankroll for that long, allow the sports book to use this as a loan uh, for that long? I think I'd be more willing to do that with the Bengals than with the Chiefs. Now, if you're looking for a longer shot, because neither the Chiefs or the Bengals are that, I think an obvious archetype emerges. Looking back to the past two years, the two surprise teams, maybe not surprises to everyone, but surprises to a lot of the market, were the Bengals and the Eagles. The Bengals, their win total entry in 2021 was six and a half, which I thought was too low, but I also had them, I think, at seven and a half wins. So I wasn't, I was only a win above market, not super high. Uh, I should have been higher on them. So even I underestimated the Bengals, despite being above market on them. The Eagles were higher uh, than six and a half win total. There was a nine; they were a nine and a half. I had them a nine point eight win, so above the market there, but not by a whole lot. The common thread between those two teams is that they both got big spikes in passing efficiency from their quarterbacks. If you look at the top of the odds board, it's not entirely sorted by projected passing efficiency, but it is pretty close. Chiefs have Mahomes. Eagles have Hurts. Bills are third. They've got Josh Allen. Bengals have Joe Burrow. The 49ers have Kyle Shanahan and a uh, constantly efficient passing offense. And it's Dak Prescott, Aaron Rodgers. So basically the most efficient passing offenses are at the top of the odds board. If you want an exception and a team that a team that can be a long shot and emerge, you probably need them to exceed their projected passing efficiency. So to me, that's what I'm looking for. And I'm trying to bet a long shot to win the Super Bowl is I want a team that I think can be efficient in that regard. And to me, the team that best fits that is the Cleveland Browns. They are 28 to one to win Super Bowl 53. That ranks 13th among all teams. And it is ninth among teams in the AFC. In my power rankings, I've actually got the Browns seventh overall and fourth among AFC teams behind just the three powerhouses of the Chiefs, the Bengals, and the Bills. That might be too high. I think that's entirely possible because there are some very good teams in that conference that I am maybe too low on, like teams in their, their own division, like the Baltimore Ravens. I could see that argument for sure. Maybe the Chargers in that discussion too. Maybe I'm too low on those teams. But here's the pitch here for the Browns. And the pitch to me is, I expect them to be more efficient with Deshaun Watson this year than they were last year. The last full season for Deshaun Watson was 2020. In that year, Houston went 4-12. and But Watson ranked fifth in total net expected points. That's uh, number fires EPA metric. So accounting for his rushing, he had the fifth most total net expected points in the entire league. He was fifth in total in NEP per dropbacks, not just the rushing. The passing was also pretty efficient when you account for it on a per dropback basis. So it was not just because Houston was trailing the entire year and jacking up uh, volume and stuff like that. He was very efficient in both regards. In 2019, Watson, fifth in total NEP, 11th in EPA per or in NEP per dropback. Last year, obviously, was bad because you look at him, Watson, on a per dropback basis. His efficiency was worse than Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz cannot buy a job right now. And I'm talking about Deshaun Watson to win the Super Bowl. But we know that he can be that efficient. Kevin Stefanski made Jacoby Brissett efficient before Watson came in. He made Baker Mayfield look good for entire seasons. So I have faith in this this. This offensive coaching staff, I have faith in Kevin Stefanski, faith in the system to amplify passing efficiency here. I'm not as high on the Browns pass catchers as a lot of people are. I think Amari Cooper's fine. Uh, definitely okay there. I think Donovan Peoples-Jones a bit underrated. Um, they did add Elijah Moore. I think that's a large part of why I'm not as high on their pass catchers as others because there's some pretty big red flags there. So I'm not as high on their pass catchers as some, but it's not a terrible group by any means. The offensive line here is pretty solid and having Nick Chubb is never going to be a bad thing. You know, I mean, we're not going to prioritize rushing efficiency, but if you're going to give it to us on a platter with arguably the best running back from a rushing perspective in football, not going to say no. On defense, they've got talent. They've got some guys with a lot of speed. Uh, they got Miles Garrett. That's always fun. And adding Jim Schwartz into the fold, the defensive coordinator, could better help that talent on defense shine through. So basically... To me, the Browns have upside in all the key areas. They can get good defensive passing efficiency via Miles Garrett in that secondary, and they can go get good offensive passing efficiency via Deshaun Watson in the passing game. So 
if you want a long shot, I think the Browns are your best bet. As mentioned, it's tough to go with another AFC North team because the division is so tough. They're probably going to have to come through a wild card spot, given I like the Bengals a lot. But again, they face the NFC West. They get Arizona. Uh, they get the Rams who are down. I'm not as high on the Seahawks as a lot of people are. And the 49ers, you know, quarterback is definitely up in the air there. And then they get the AFC South after that. The best argument against the Browns is not wanting to root for the Browns, given the very credible accusations of sexual assault and harassment against Deshaun Watson. I think that is a very fair argument and one I feel myself as well. So it's hard to want players like that to succeed. And inherently, if you're betting them, you are going to root for them to win. And that doesn't feel great. It feels pretty icky. So I think that's the best argument against the Browns winning Super Bowl is you just don't want to root for them. I get that and fully agree. If we're looking just for teams with building blocks, though, to make a big leap and potentially contend for a Super Bowl, the Browns are a team that do check those boxes for me. So strictly from a football perspective, I think the Browns are the best long shot to win Super Bowl 53. 28 to 1 are their odds over a FanDuel Sportsbook. I also would say if you're looking at other markets, maybe less upside markets, the Browns plus 104 to, win, uh, to make the playoffs. I think that's a pretty fair market as well. So if you don't want to necessarily go with the full upside to win Super Bowl, I think that the to make the playoffs number plus 104 also pretty good just based on, again, upside and key areas, the, the, the schedule not as difficult maybe as perception, despite the division being very tough. I think that all that does align to make the Browns a quality option in the futures market, both to make the playoffs and to win the Super Bowl at 28 to 1. That is all that we have here for today on covering the spread. Again, it's a pretty fun market um, to look at Super Bowl to try to identify teams that have some upside to potentially surprise. Again, I don't think the Chiefs are the worst bet, just not my personal style to lock up bankroll that long when the edge is probably pretty minimal in that regard. But the Bengals and Browns, both pretty enticing teams to me. So I guess we are all on the AFC North for this year. We'll be back once again tomorrow here on the show talking to Pitching Ninja, Rob Freeman, breaking down some strikeout props he likes over at FanDuel Sportsbook and also talking about that market FanDuel has for the pitcher to lead the slate in strikeouts. Get that by subscribing to Covering the Spread on your podcast platform of choice and also check us out over on the FanDuel YouTube page as well. If you've got questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. Want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your bets, whether it be for baseball, the U.S. Open, whatever it may be for today. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.